Hi guys, welcome back to Check Your Leader TV. Today, just a short video. I'm going to discuss the interactions uh, between Republican Roman troops and their contemporaries uh, using the rules Hail Caesar. Um, just picked up my, my new copy of Hail Caesar. Good fun rules, a uh, bit of a beers and pretzels kind of game, but uh, doesn't mean it can't be historically accurate. And so, um, um, we're going to look at um, uh, basing for Hail Caesar and why it matters when we're talking about uh, uh, the interactions between the Roman manipula uh, type warfare. We're talking here the, the triple X axis, uh, Hastati, Pricope, uh fighting against uh, their contemporary enemies. And in this case, I'm going to focus on uh, the Peric and the Macedonian style armies, the Pike Phalanxes. Okay, so without further ado, let's have a look. Okay guys, so I'm looking at the Hail Caesar rules uh, relating to Republican Roman, so we're talking Polybian, uh, pre-Marian reforms, essentially, Republican Roman armies and how they base their um, Hastati, uh, Pricope, and Triarii, the main battle uh, infantry. Um, basically, uh, a, a small size unit in Hail Caesar, a small unit will have exactly half the frontage of a standard unit. Now, what what the base size is not really relevant or important other than the fact that I'll just state that I work on a, a, the idea that the average uh, average unit in Hail Caesar uh, is going to be 120 millimeters wide. Why? Because uh, my units are based predominantly for impetus, and so the vast majority of my units are 120 millimeter wide. So, with the idea of a unit being 120 millimeter wide, a small unit in Hail Caesar for me would be 60. But it doesn't really matter because if you were using the suggested basing sizes, uh, it would be uh, 160 millimeter wide and it would be 80. So it's still, it's half. Now, uh, why do why does Hail Caesar recommend small units for their uh, Hastati and Pricope? Uh, just straight up, um, I'm going to use the pronunciation pronunciations of the Roman units based on uh, what I believe the way they should be pronounced. So, Hastati and Pricope. Now, as you can see, these are Samonites, not Romans. Of course, all my Romans are actually based uh, 120 millimeter wide. So, that's the, that's how I base my uh, my Romans. Um, but so, I, because I don't have 60 millimeter wide bases, let's just use these Samonites and pretend they're Romans. Well, in, in, in 50 years or so, they will be. Anyway, moving on. Um, what this means is that um, the combat factor of a Hastati and Pricope unit is essentially combat value five. Now, you pitch that against a Pike Phalanx, that'll have a combat value of seven. If it's fighting in a deep formation, i.e. it has a supporting Pike Phalanx to its rear, then it has a combat factor of 10. So here we have one Pike Phalanx and there's another one behind it, uh, fighting as you would expect a Pike block to fight in a deep formation. These small uh, Hastati units, uh, in according to Hal Caesar, the way they would operate is they would go into combat, uh, and if they're fighting just unit on unit, you're going to have a combat factor of five uh, with Pelum fighting against a unit combat factor of seven, maybe ten. But that's not how people or anyone with common sense would fight with these guys. The way they would do it is they would have their Hastati and behind them, their uh, Pricope. Essentially, the units are uh, the same. So this unit would go in, this unit would then go in, this unit would go in, and then this unit would go in. So now you would have a combat value of five and five versus a combat value of seven, maybe 10. So five and five, 10 versus seven, maybe 10. Um, now, this is where I have uh, an issue with uh, how Hail Caesar, uh, the rules uh, purport to simulate 
the manipula fighting style of the Republican Romans. Okay, so the first issue I have is um, if you're, you're, if you're um, using the maniples as the, the individual combat units and, and each of these maniples are fighting independent, uh, almost independent of other ones, what you would have is a situation where uh, a, um, a maniple goes in, it strikes the, the enemy's battle line, um, it, while it's fighting, uh, another maniple is waiting off uh, for, uh, for, for its turn to go into action. Um, but I, I don't actually believe that that's how the, the manipula system worked. In other words, what I think is these maniples were predominantly um, a, a manoeuvre type formation. So they would manoeuvre around the battlefield in these manipula formations uh, but once they they went into combat, they basically the manipula formation basically ceased to exist, and they they just basically went in as a, as a a line of battle. So essentially, what you would have is um, the, let's talk about just the astarte. The astarte would be deployed, and then uh, at a given point, they would go into action. They would go forward, strike the enemy battle line, and then each of these maniples would go forward. And and. And basically, the whole Hastati would fight as a solid battle line. So, where does this idea of relief in, in uh, relief in place or the battle line relief? Where does that come from? Well, here's here's my theory. Okay, so what I actually believe, and let's be clear about this: no one actually knows how this manipula, um, this triple X axes. Uh, form of, of fighting was actually implemented. It's all conjecture, basically. But this is what I think uh, might have been the way it was done. Essentially, Hastati would be um, out the front in their manipular formations, and behind them would be the uh, Pricope, and then finally you would have a line of Triarii. Essentially, at a given time, the Hastati would go forward uh, as um, in their manipular formations, but when they strike, they would actually strike as uh, the, the, a complete line. So the the, the Hastati would go forward uh, in in their maniples, uh, go forward, and then as they hit, they would just simply come in together and form a battle line. Now, that said, the Pricope would maintain their uh, manipular formations to the rear of the Hastati. So over time, as the Hastati are fighting, um, eventually what they would do is they would start to tire. But on a at a given point, what would happen is the Hastati would simply disengage and break off. And when they break off, they would then basically move back through these these gaps in the in the uh, the Pricope and then form up behind them, um, again, in manipular formation. And as that was going on, as they moved back, as they passed the, the Pricope, the Pricope would then go forward, again, in their manipular formation. But as they contact the enemy, they would then um, just basically form a, a solid single battle line. So you would have all the Hastati fighting um, initially in a solid line, and then as they, as they become um, tired, they then, on a signal, disengage, move back, and then the pay would go forward and then repeat the process. So something along the lines of uh, they're fighting, they're tiring, they move back through these gaps, and then the pay essentially simply swap, swaps position with them. Now, you might think that what I've just said here reinforces uh, the Hail Caesar method of these individual um, uh, small units uh, going in. But I, I would uh, argue against that because what you, would, what you do by having these small units is you're actually inflating the combat ability of the uh, individual uh, units of um, Hastati or Pricopade. Essentially, if it's fighting as a solid unit, it's going to have a combat factor of seven. Um, 
Now, where do I get that number from? I get that number from the Marian Roman lists in Hail Caesar, where they have these regular units of legionnaires, which are essentially the exact same guys, but they're now been they've been instead of being in units of Astarte and of units of a Pricope, they've now all been just jumbled in together and they're now called legionaries. And their combat factor is seven. So the other problem there, of course, of course, is that the combined value, points value of these two small units, um, if you use uh, the Hastati, uh as small units, exceeds the value of the unit um, that is uh, you know, just a regular size or a standard size unit. Now, the reason why I think this is important is because uh, a unit of Hastati or Pricope, if they're based as a standard size unit and given the same uh, characteristics um, as the as per the Marian list, where they're basically a, a standard unit, you have a combat value of seven. Now, if they're fighting against a pike phalanx, what that means is a combat value of seven versus a combat value of seven. However, the the legionnaires have their pilum, so that's going to be a minus one to the save throw for the the pike phalanx. However, the pike phalanx could be supported and should be supported, essentially, because the pike should be fighting deep. So you have a combat value of 7 plus 3, 10, fighting a unit of combat value 7 with pilum. The advantage initially should sit with the pike phalanx. The pilum might balance it out a little, but it'll only balance it out for the first round of combat. Now the other problem with and, and this again goes back to uh, the the points value. If if you've got your Roman units in small units, um, and we've already ascertained that two small units are going to cost more than one uh, standard unit, um, what you, that means is frontage wise, it's going to cost you more points to cover less frontage, or the same frontage, more points to cover the same frontage, um, and that that's going to work heavily against the Republican Roman army, which seems kind of silly because the the the, the way that the, the Republican Romans defeated uh, pike phalanxes was either they got pushed back to a point where the pikes ended up going into disordering terrain, as they did um, in one of the battles where uh, Ferris fought um, um, the uh, Republican Romans, uh, or they were able to get onto the flanks of the the Romans were able to get onto the flanks of the pike blocks. Uh, if their frontage is is the same or smaller than the uh, the uh, the phalanx, then you, you're going to have problems trying to get onto the flanks of uh, these um, these Macedonian or uh, pike type armies. Okay, so having uh, explained why I believe. The Hestadi and Pricope should be standard size units as opposed to small units. Um, what I'm also going to suggest is some house rules or suggested rules for simulating the, the ability of the Hestadi and the Pricope to conduct this relief in place. So what I would suggest is, um, as per the, the Hal Caesar rule, you have... They're just classed as heavy infantry, standard heavy infantry, combat value seven, um, uh, armed with pillar, uh, pillar. Um, but I'll also give them, um, as well as the drilled um, characteristic, feigned flight. Now, you, you don't have to call it feigned flight. You could just call it, oh, I don't know, manipular tactics or something. But essentially what it does is just like feigned flight, at any point um, during combat, the Roman player at, in the movement phase can disengage with his uh, Hestadi and replace them, just do a, a, an actual swap in place with where the, uh, the, uh, with the Pricope. Uh, you know, the Pricope have to be within um, six inches uh, to do the, the, the swap, but if the Pricope are to the rear, anywhere in the rear half uh, or their rear area, and they're within six inches, then you just say at the the um, appropriate uh, in the command phase, you just simply say, okay, I'm going to now do uh, manipulate tactics, 
and you simply just swap the Hastati with the Pricapay. Uh, there is a, a caveat. If you do it with one Hastati unit within the division, then you must do it with all the Hastati units within the division. So basically, the, the Hastati are in there, they're fighting, they, they, they're giving it, their, uh, giving it what for, and then and, and getting stuck in. And then at, at a given point, um, the commander of the legion basically uh, sees, okay, the, these Hastati boys are getting a bit tired, okay, uh, you know, blast on the horns, and out the, the Hastati uh, disengage, and the Pricapeg take their place. And it's just a, 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 a swap. Now, there's nothing on original here. This is actually the same rule that they use in the impetus to simulate manipular uh, combat. Um, and so, and that's it. That it's as simple as that. Oh, and I should want to uh, add one other caveat. Um, I would not permit um, in my army list. I would not permit Pricape to provide rear support for Hastati. Um, or if the Pricapay are fighting, I would not permit the study to provide rear support for the, the Pricapay. The reason for this is because that's just not what they did. It's just not how they fought. The Pricapay, when the study went in, the Pricapay the Pricapay stayed back and they stayed out of the fight. They let the Hastati get um, hook in and then obviously they would then break off contact and then they would pull back and exchange positions with the Pricapay and the Pricapay would go in. If these were providing rear support, well, that's obviously that makes the whole thing redundant. Um, these guys are supposed to be in line, uh, in a second line to the rear, um, basically conserving energy before they go in. Before they go in, the other thing, of course, is um, contemporary. Uh, well, the, the the writings basically suggest that essentially the Hastati would fight, they would fall back, the Pricapay would fight, and then if they didn't, if they weren't successful, they all they would all fall back behind the. Uh, triarii, but I find this a little bit odd. I would would have thought that the whole purpose of disengaging the Hastati and then putting the Pricape in um, is to basically rest the, the troops. Uh, maybe it would even be include uh, include such thing as uh, Hastati's falling back, um, so they're you know they're, 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 there they are in, in the battle line hooking in. But when they disengage, they come back and then they form up in their manipular uh, units. Um, why would they do that? Well, it's easier to organize and get uh, troops back into formation if the formations are small uh, and manageable. So I wouldn't have, I would not be surprised um, if the Hastati, when they fell back through the Pricape and they reformed, they reformed in their manipulate formations, uh, casualties were taken away and uh, treated, uh, the the, the centurions uh, ran around kicking asses and putting people into um, into some kind of organized uh, you know shifting uh, soldiers around within the, the the manipula formation and basically organizing them so that when the pre uh, pricape uh, were starting to tire they could pull back and then the hastati could go back in again um, and maybe they would do that two or three times um, until either they were they defeated the their opponents, or they got to a point where they were just basically worn down. Whereupon they would fall back behind the triarii, and either from that from that uh, shelter position prepare to withdraw from the battle, and uh, try their luck another day. Um, so yes, um, the other cat the other rule would be, apart from the the uh, the drilled. And that the the feign flight slash manipular tactics would be um, they're not permitted to provide rear support to one another. Uh, Pricape cannot provide rear support to Hastati. Hastati cannot provide rear support to Pricape. Um, okay, essentially my Republican Romans, the way I'm going to play them, um, uh, my my list is I'm going to base them as um, standard size units. And I'm going to uh, give the Hastati and the Pricape um, uh, drilled so that they can interpenetrate one another. And also the feign flight, which I'm not going to call feign flight. I'm just going to call it something like manipular tactics. Um, as for the Triarii, um, 
for every two units of Hastati and two units of Pricope, you get one standard size unit of Triarii. Um, if uh, you only have one Hastati and one Pricope, then you can have uh, a small unit of Triarii. They take up the same amount of uh, space, but I'm just going to give them the, the values uh, of a standard, uh, sorry, of a small unit as opposed to a standard size unit. And other than that, uh, I'm not going to mess with the, the list uh, in any other way, shape, or form. So that, that's what I'm, uh, that's my suggested solution for trying to simulate manipular uh, tactics with a Republican Roman army. Um, I'm going to play test this. Um, and I'll upload a, uh, an after action report. And um, in the meantime, however, if you've got any comments, just pop them in the, the comment section. Um, uh, like this video, it does help. And uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We've just hit 2000 uh, subscribers, which is just, uh, for me, it's just really satisfying to, to think that there's actually 2000 people uh, have taken the time to actually subscribe to the channel. So to all those people who have subscribed, thank you very much. Um, and with that, I'm just going to wrap it up there. Uh, and I'll be interested to hear your, your comments. Um, and until next time, um, Yubikwe.